Hi guys, this is Omer from MMO.com. I'm doing another quick weekly recap of MMO news and announcements of the week ending May 13th, 2012. Anyway, as you can see from the video playing in the background, the first piece of news we'll be, we'll be taking a look at this week has to do with a game called 2112. The news is on May 7th, eMobi Games announced a brand new free-to-play MMO called 2112, which will be released on December 21st, 2012. So if the world doesn't end on 2012, we can at least uh, look forward to some 2112. Now the game aims to mix uh, base defense with real-time strategy elements in a sci-fi environment with three playable races. And it looks like the game features units that look a bit like Thor's over there, as well as uh, Banshees from StarCraft 2. Very little right now is known about the game. All we really know is it's going to be released later this year. And uh, at least it looks to be a client-based game, but uh, it's a client-based strategy game, which is uh, kind of odd because you usually see browser-based strategy games. Uh, up next, on May 8th, Riot Games introduced yet another new champion to League of Legends, Varus the Era of Retribution. And since we had a gameplay patch last week, no other gameplay changes have been made. Varus is a ranged carry champion that, from my experience, is usually, usually played on bot lane, the same way any other ranged carry would be. Now, since Varus was released, I've seen him play nearly uh, every game, but time will tell whether he remains a viable champion or not. I mean, nearly every time a new champion is released, everyone sort of rushes to play him and try him out, but then he, he or she usually drops off pretty quickly. I mean, Ziggs and Fiora, for example, were pretty common back in the day, but now you never really see them anymore. And Sejuani, she's never played. Next up, also on May 8th, Tribes Ascend launches the Tartarus update, which introduces two new maps, Tartarus, a capture the flag style map similar to Catabolic, and Hinterland, an arena map featuring only a handful of inventory stations. The update also adds the ability to configure four pre-established loadout loadouts per class, and the ability to quickly switch between them via keybinds. Uh, next up, on May 9th, Gravity Interactive announced they too will be launching Maestia on their War Portal platform sometime this summer. And I say them too because uh, Maestia was originally EU only on Big Point, but it later closed down there and moved over to a la Playa. And it looks that like a la Player is still running the game, but now players can also play on the War Portal platform pretty soon. I'm not too, I'm not too sure what the point is of having the same exact game available on two different platforms, but it looks like the a la Player version will also will be for European users, while War Portal version will be for North American users. Though I'm pretty sure there are no IP restrictions on the a la Player version of the game, so it's just weird to have two versions of the same game on two different platforms. This kind of divides the player base up for no real reason. Up uh, next, also on May 9th, 2012, G-Potato said they'll be launching Rappel's Epic 7 reanimation on June 7th. And to celebrate the upcoming launch of Epic 7, G-Potato is running a three week long event where players get 50% bonus experience until up until June 3rd, with our various other events going on each and every week. The Epic 7 expansion will introduce a new master class dungeon for higher level players, as well as new items for players to obtain. And now moving right along, on May 9th, SG Interactive launched a small update for Grand Chase. Uh, Dio just gained his third job, Leviathan. And you can see a tiny bit of the Leviathan gameplay in the video in the background. And to celebrate the launch of the Leviathan job, players gain 20% bonus experience in dungeons and PvP for being on Dio's team or playing as Dio. Next up, also on May 9th, Elsor launched a new dungeon, The Gates of Darkness. The dungeon is a defense dungeon where players must hold off against 15 waves of demons alone or with a party. The greater the difficulty mode, the greater the reward. Not exactly a huge update, but still an update. And now uh, the video in the background is the official trailer for this update, so you can see the dungeon in the background. And uh, next up, the Lost Open update for War of the Immortals officially launched on May 10th. We mentioned this update uh, last week or the week before that, so I'll keep this one a bit short. The update added the new Scythe Wielding Harbinger class to the game, and it's added several new areas designated for players level 100 plus. And the video in the background is actually the Lost Omen launch trailer, so you can see some of the new features at work, or rather the new class we already saw, and the new uh, King of Combat Arena. Up next, also on May 10th, Dragon S introduced uh, Guild Rumble. Now, Guild Rumble, as you probably guess, is a guild vs. guild system. Uh, it's a monthly competition in monster fighting, achievement earning, and arena battling to prove who's the best guild around. The winners will earn exclusive costumes and mounts. The most recent update also adds a new medium-sized PvP map called Spirit Garden. The next and last bit of news uh, this week comes from our friends over at S2. The news is that May 11th, Heroes of New Earth officially launched a new game mode called Mid Wars, which as you probably guess is a mid-only style game. Now the release of Mid Wars uh, has been timed with Heroes of New Earth's second anniversary, or as S2 likes to say, their anniversary. Now S2 saw that a lot of people were playing non-ranked public games of mid-only style games, so they decided to release a new map specifically designed for mid-only. Here's hoping Riot Games does the same thing for League of Legends, as mid-only and bot-only in Dominion are actually pretty popular. Now, well, that's it for MMO news, but as for games coming soon, we have nothing on the radar, but as for games that recently launched, Spirit Tales from Quorum Game officially launched into open beta on May 10th. The open beta features several new features, including the Guild Islands, which are private zones for guilds, 
the sweetheart system, an enhanced pet system, and more. The open beta's level cap has also been raised to 45. The Spirit Tales is the newest game from X Legend, the makers of Grand Fantasia and Eden Eternal. And the video you're seeing in the background is actually the official open beta trailer for the game as well. Anyway guys, that's it for my news and announcements for the week, week ending May 13th, 2012. Now if you want to read about or learn more about any of the news mentioned in this video, simply head on over to m1.com slash news. And if you want to discuss anything in this video, simply head on over to m1.com slash forums. Anyway guys, this is Omer, signing off.